Hi, I'm Bernie Hayes. Today's guest is Bob Baugh, former union organizer, photographer, writer, and many more things. Today on The Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. Today's guest is Bob Baugh. Bob, how are you? I'm good, Bernie. And welcome nice to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. Well, I see you're wearing a National Blues Museum shirt there. What, what, what connection do you have with the National Blues Museum? You, partly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, was, I was actually their first volunteer. Uh, when I moved here in, uh, after retirement in 2015, I went downtown and saw this papered over building said, Future Home Of. And... Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to figure out what to do in retirement, and I thought, I'm going to volunteer there. We signed up at all the other places in town, but I said, I want to do that. And I uh, called Dion Brown on his second day on the job. Really? Okay. And just said, hey, um, I want to be one of your volunteers. Here's my name and number. I mean, it would, it would take a year before they you know, called back and built the volunteer pool. Yeah. But uh, I was with the museum from the very get-go. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful to us. Let's see, we're going to talk a lot about the National Blues Museum today. But there's uh, so many photographs that you also have. Yeah. But Bob, you were a former union organizer, but you're on the West Coast, right? Uh, well, I was. Mm -hmm. I, I lived out in Portland, Oregon <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, for 17 years, and then I lived in Washington, D.C. for 23 years, right. and uh, I was actually one of the top union officials at the AFL-CIO uh, for manufacturing and trade and climate, and spent many years doing that. So you, you transitioned to this photographer that we all know. How, how did that come about? Well, photography was my lifelong hobby, and um, you know, when you retire, you, you start to think about what what am I going to do now that yeah. I have this time. And I always assumed photography would be what I would do in my retirement, uh, build on my hobby and skills. And uh, that's what I started out to do, and started out at the museum. I said immediately to them, "Let me volunteer to shoot any shows we do," and I did. And that's sort of how I got going in shooting blues in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I, I was unaware, uh, frankly, of what a wonderful music scene it was we had here when I first moved here. I did not, I did not know. I had not lived here for 40 years. Um, uh, and I lived here in the late 70s with my then girlfriend, now my wife of nearly 42 years. Mm -hmm. um, and, but didn't know much about the music scene then and moved back here 40 years later and got, got involved. That's great. Show some of your work, Bob. I think you would... Uh... You, you brought some of the work that perhaps we can see. Yeah. Um, are you going to run some of those? There's some there, pictures we can show. There is. we go. There's, there's a couple. These were shot at the um, National Blues Museum, and that picture I shot of Marquise Knox mm -hmm. um, actually has been used all over the world, and Marquise has used it as part of his portfolio that they use when they set up shows and put out posters and stuff. Uh, the other uh, gentleman there is William Bell who was up from Memphis when we did the Take Me to the River show in the early year, the first year of the museum. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I really got into taking photographs. Um, but there was a fairly quick transition um, from that to, to writing. Because I met a guy shooting that uh, Take Me to the River show at the museum, mm -hmm. or, or right before that, who was a KDX, KDHX photographer. And he was like me, a, a recent retiree and doing what he loved. And he said, you know, you should publish on KDHX. So I thought, well, okay. Um, and he said, I just take my pictures and write my stories. And it, it made me realize when I met with KDHX and the other photographers, they were talking about, we want our writers writing about the same things people take pictures about. Um, and uh, that guy was, uh, Bill Mochin was there, and he leans over, he says, Bob, just take your own pictures, write your own stories. And I thought, well, this is a twofer. I'll get to see free music for free and get to uh, take pictures of it and, and write about it. And um, it turns out I'm a, I'm a good writer. I, I was. Yeah, you're, quite, you're a wonderful writer, quite a proficient writer. And uh, I'm a witness to that. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, here's, I mean, here's an example. So yeah. um, one of the things I did is I started writing for the museum, and I wrote a story about the Take Me to the River show and sent it to KDHX, and it turned out to be the most viewed piece they'd ever put on their website. Um, wow. and, and it was partly because I linked it through the museum to their database, 
I sent it to the Blues Society. I linked it to other people, so we got a much wider spread of the story. Uh, and then I just started writing, and in the last three to four years, I've written more than 100 and published more than 100 stories. And All led, of the wonderful stories, too. I've, been, I've it, read most of them, at least some of them, <laughs> I may, perhaps not most of them. Yeah, here's, here's a picture of one that you might know. <laughs> there's, there's Uvi. It was a cover of a, a, it was a story that I had written for the magazine, and it was a cover. This is the Blues Letter by the St. Louis Blues Society, and for the last three plus years, I've been, I've been the main writer. I write two to three stories per issue. Um, and uh, although we've been in abeyance for the past year because of COVID. Yeah, that's my wife, yeah. Uvi Hayes. Wow. Yeah. A great story you did on her. And uh, we really appreciate that. That was really, really great. So, so Bob, uh, tell us uh, about the magazines that you write for. You, you're also a member of the St. Louis Blues Society, right? Yes. And this is, like I said, I've become the main writer for the Blues Letter since Jeremy recruited me. Mm -hmm. Jeremy a, a, brilliant, a brilliant move on his part because it, it moved him out of having to write all the issues. Sure. <laughs> um, so it, it started with doing that first article that I did for um, literally KDHX mm -hmm. about uh, Take Me to the River, and it turned out to be a big hit. And I discovered something that, it, it, you know, it came out of nowhere. And when you retire, you don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I discovered, you know, that where I thought photography was going to be my go-to creative thing that I wanted to do, I had a hell of a lot of fun writing a story, and I can tell a good story. And, um, and that became, I mean, it literally became an issue. The second story I went to write was actually to interview Jeremy about the baby blues. Jeremy uh, Siegel Moss. Yeah, Jeremy Siegel Moss, head of the Blues Society yeah, and mm -hmm. Bottoms Up Blues Gang, and mm -hmm. went to interview him about, you know, the baby blues. And, yeah. and he turned around right then and there and recruited me to write for the blues letter. That's great. Um, and so all of a sudden I'm writing for two publications. And then... Six months later, we had the Woman in the Blues show at um, the museum, and I wrote about that. And I started doing regular writing, and, and uh, I met this woman, Lynn Orman Weiss, who was, did that show, The Woman of the Blues. Mm -hmm. And she happened to be in town to take the show down the weekend of the celebration of the memorial to uh, Chuck Berry's life. Yeah. And KDHX had assigned me to write a story about Berry, so I'm down there interviewing people in the street, and I see Lynn, and I said, well, you're gonna write a story for that national magazine you write for? And she says, no, you are. We're gonna use whatever you write. <laughs> and um, that's literally what happened. They had me send it into the magazine, um, and I never heard anything. And I finally called the publisher as they were approaching deadline for the, writer, the writers, and he said, what do you got? The issue's on the Rolling Stones. And I said, well, it's actually a story about Chuck Berry. He goes, he goes we're writing memorials all the time. I don't want to write more about more blues artists that died. And I said, well, read the story. <laughs> and he did. And the only reference I had to, to uh, Chuck Berry, uh, to, to the, the Rolling Stones in it, was I said, before there was a Richards and uh, Jagger, you know, there was Johnson and Berry. Right. <laughs> you know? And um, he liked the story yeah. a lot. And they ran it in spite of what the theme of the magazine was. Johnny Johnson and Chuck Berry. Yeah. And then yeah. they, they followed. And I sent him a couple of other stories. Sure. And said, here, take a look. And I didn't hear anything for three or four months. And all of a sudden, I get this phone call. He goes, we want your Mr. Handy story from uh, when we premiered the movie here. Yeah. I said, sure. Mr. And then, Handy's and Blues. We, and we'd like you to do a column every other issue, three, that which would be three times a yeah. year. Um, mm -hmm. Except they called me back the next issue and said, hey, you sent a story about Gus Thornton, that bass player. We want to run it as a feature. So I updated it. Boom. And then all of a sudden, I was in every issue. It wasn't every other issue. I have a regular St. Louis column in uh, Big City Rhythm and Blues. Here's a, yeah. here's a picture of it. Um, okay, that's, we'll talk about this issue in a bit. But it's just... Yeah, that's high C. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. There, blues. Yeah. Big City Rhythm and Blues. Yeah. The National Blues Museum, uh, high C in front of it there. She, she, she just won that contest in Memphis, right? Exactly. She yeah. won the international competition. Mm -hmm. um, people were thrilled. People in St. Louis were thrilled. Um, we had started a relationship with the guy who publishes this magazine. Right. Um, it's sort of like one thing builds and leads to another, Bernie. That's sort of what's yeah. happened here. I stumbled into this. It turned out I'm good at the writing part of it, and I, I shoot my own pictures lots of times, which I love to do. Good. We want to come back and see some of the artwork that you've done. And, uh, 
Sure. I just want to say thank you for coming out, Bob. Um, sure. You know, this pandemic and it didn't, didn't keep you from it. But we're at the New Life Evangelistic Center, 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri, 63114. And Reverend Larry Rice has been providing services for those in need for almost 50 years. And we're trying to get the open, reopen 1411 Local Street. But in the meantime, 2428 Woodson Road is our address. And we hope that you perhaps will support us here by bringing some food or clothing or something, some items that uh, the poor needs. Back with Bob Ball after this. Will you help New Life Evangelistic Center get back into 1411 Locust Street? Your tax deductible gifts are urgently needed at this particular time. And there's many different ways that we're working to get back in that facility. One of the ways is to continue to inform the community through the Bernie Hayes Show and other programs. And if you haven't supported the Bernie Hayes Show and the work of New Life Evangelistic Center, please do it now. It's urgently needed. Your gifts are deeply appreciated. So many homeless people are waiting to get back into 1411 Locust, and so many others need the direct help that New Life is trying to provide at this time, but is facing some real financial needs, and that's why your gift is very, very important. And to express our thankfulness for all of you that are sharing your gifts, we want to send you this special Bernie Hayes Cup. It's my wife's favorite drinking cup. She loves to drink out of this cup, and this is actually the only coffee cup she wants to use is the Bernie Hayes cup. There's something very special about this cup, and we'll send it to each one of you that share a gift of $25 or more with the New Life Evangelistic Center and ask for your Bernie Hayes cup. It's P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Your gift will not only help us get back into the 1411 Locust Building, but will help our first responders that are on the streets, the first responders that we have out there day after day, night after night. It will help keep our uh, women and children in our safe houses, continue to keep our training programs open, our worldwide mission work, whether it's in India, Haiti, Africa, so many different things the New Life Evangelistic Center is doing. In addition to NLEC TV, tell your family and friends about it. Put it on your phone. Put on your, uh, get that phone app on all your friends' phones so they can all see the Bernie Hayes Show or go to 24.2. It's your prayers and gifts that make all of this possible. I thank God for those of you who continue to pray for the reopening of 1411 Locust and the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. There's so many obstacles we're facing as we try to help the homeless, but we're going to continue to give it to God. We're going to continue to pray. We're going to continue to work, but we need you to partner with us. So again, it's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, the 63166. I thank God for each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing. Well, welcome back. Uh, I'm Bernie Hayes, and my guest is Bob Ball. He's a photographer, he's a writer, he's a syndicated writer, columnist, and so forth, and uh, he's a blues lover. So, Bob, welcome back. Thank you, Bernie. Now, we left, we were showing a picture of High C and her band in front of the National Blues Museum. Tell us about this picture. Yeah, this is, this is where a couple of tracks come together for us. Um, this is for the cover of Big City Rhythm and Blues. It's a national blues magazine. I think it's the biggest in the country, uh, out of Detroit, Michigan. Um, and that's who I had started writing for. Mm -hmm. Two interesting things happened along the way in going up to meet to Detroit, which is my hometown. So it was sort of interesting that I, I knew I had never met this guy, but we're the same age and we've been to the same places when we were teenagers. It wow. was very strange. Yeah. Um, but I went up to meet with him about writing stories for the magazine and stuff, and I was sitting in his house and he had all this really great artwork. I mean, he was, and it turns out it was his. He was painting, uh, and it was a relatively recent development for him, but I was so impressed, I took all these pictures of it, and I came back to the National Blues Museum and said, you should get this guy's show for one of the uh, traveling exhibits uh, that they have there. And uh, they really liked the material. Um, yeah. And they ended up doing that and commissioning three uh, pieces of artwork um, that the, the painter also painted. Okay, what, this? what you're looking at there mm -hmm. is, it was one of the pictures. It's an example of his artwork. Yeah. That's John Lee Hooker um, in Detroit, uh, uh, where he really got the start of his career. And actually, it's my hometown, so I, yeah. I, I, I like it a lot. <laughs> but I loved his colors. Um, and so we arranged to bring his show to the museum. Well, he comes to St. Louis. And, and uh, they had not covered St. Louis, really. I mean, other than until I started writing for them, they just they didn't know much about what was going on musically in St. Louis. And I began writing these stories, and he was really impressed. Going, wow, you got a really live blues scene there yeah, when other great. places are struggling. Yeah. Uh, he came to visit. We ended up using his art show. He came to town. He loved it. And uh, 
So he finally said, and then High C won the contest in Memphis. Sure. And he told me at the time, he said, she's going to be on the cover of the magazine. I'm not sure when, but in the next year, we will do this. And that's exactly what happened. He came to town. We shot High C in front of the museum. Um, and then he did something else that he'd never done. I came on as co-editor, essentially. I mean, this, this particular issue is all about St. Louis. They've, the entire issue is St. Louis. Yeah. We had five local writers. We had six national writers. I wrote three, sto three of the stories. Uh, and I curated all the artwork and photography that's in it. Uh, so I'm really, I'm really proud of the effort. But what really makes you feel good is when you came back home and we got them and it hit the presses and you could show it to people. And the musicians and blues folks in town were like absolutely thrilled. That's great. As you know, people feel often that um, we don't get the recognition, St. Louis doesn't get the recognition for the musicians and the quality of music that we have here. Certainly. Yeah. And this, this helped yeah. a lot. It was, um, it was used on the... Uh, the 2020 Blues Cruise a right. year ago, January, and it was delivered to every patron's room. I mean, it got us a lot of publicity, and I did a seminar about St. Louis music on the cruise, and a hundred and some people came to it. It was great. Yeah. I thought I knew a lot about the blues itself, too, because I grew up playing the music and then being around the musicians themselves. But when I became interim director of the National Blues Museum, <laughs> I learned a lot more, thanks to some of your articles and so forth, the things that you, you've done, contributed. Let's see some more of your, your photographs. Okay, what tell uh, That was this? actually on the same blues cruise um, mm -hmm. that, that uh, we have a picture that'll come up that, with, with High C and some of the members of the band. That's Anna Popovic, uh, a very well known national blues artist. Okay. And, uh, and, and I used this one just for an example of the young talent that's in town here, mm -hmm. right? You know, this is, this is the East Side Rhythm Band and Al Holiday and the East Side Rhythm Band. and. Uh, just an incredibly talented uh, group of musicians. That's a big band act. There's ten people. There's three singers. I mean, it's it's a show. Uh, That's great. <laughs> lots of fun. Okay. Uh, and there's High C. This is actually this is her. This is on the main stage of the Blues Cruise. Big right. deal. Mm -hmm. um, and she was performing as Frank Dunbar to her right and uh, Roland Johnson over there to her right. And I'm, I my my memory is failing me to remember who their guitarist is right there. <laughs> Yeah, but Roland's on tambourine over there. Actually, Roland is, uh, he sings as much as I see on the show, doesn't he? Oh, he's, <laughs> he's fabulous, man. Yeah, he's published, yeah. put out a couple albums the last couple of years. He's, yeah, we go back a long way. He plays with a lot of folks in town. Right. He's, he's terrific. Right. And the next one would be, I guess, was Andy Coco. Well, that right? was Andy Coco. That was a, a night of a show that he was playing with uh, Big Mike and the Blue City All Stars. Yeah. Uh, I just think he's he's you know one of the many many talented musicians. He's a he's a wonderful KDHX uh, DJ, uh, but he's also a music producer and and uh, and deeply involved in the music industry in town. He does most of the editing uh, for the podcast and also for the things that ah. the audio at uh, KDHX. Yeah, and Andy and I go back a long way. We actually Andy and I won a competition. <laughs> um, a few, few years ago, about the history of St. Louis ah. music in St. Louis. Andy yeah, Hope he's he's working different. on he's working on another project now. I yeah. understand helping put together the music that will go with the big um, music exhibit that's going to happen at the uh, uh, at the Missouri Art uh, the Missouri History Museum. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I met with a guy from Stax Records who brought Albert King's guitar right. to the History Museum. Uh, Jeff Lassoff, I believe his name is. And uh, it's going to be a big, big exhibit. But Bob, how, how does a uh, are you being fulfilled with with this role as a writer and photographer? <laughs> more, uh, more than for, blues, more, more than fulfilled. I mean, I mm -hmm. just I didn't I didn't know when I retired that I would have this creative need um, mm -hmm. to the extent that it turned out, or that it would end up being in writing. Um, okay. I always had wonderful writing and research skills was part of my portfolio and my work life. Uh, but I never thought of myself as a writer. Uh, okay. How can we reach you before we get run out of time? Sure. How uh, can Bob, we reach you? Bob.baugh at Verizon.net. Say a little bit slower so they can write it down. Bob.baugh, B-A-U-G-H, at Verizon, V-E-R-I-Z-O-N, dot net. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you actually go out scout for talent now, or do most of them come to you that uh, though you photograph and write about? 
Um, no, I don't do this. I mean, the funny part is I don't do as much photography as I initially started to do in shooting mm -hmm. all these shows. I'm just, the writing got to be, um, take up more time uh, sure. of that. Uh, and I'm trying to keep a balance. I, I love doing this. I've been trying to recruit other writers for the Blues Society since the moment they got me. Yeah. Um, because we need more. Um, Does Mary I, Kay help you? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I work with her, too. I mean, I, I work with the Blues Society. But, you know, they need... I would hope they would get some other writers, so I'm not the only one. And I, and frankly, I'm getting up there in years. I'm, I'll be 72, um, and I got two new grandbabies, and we, oh, we're traveling to see them. So there's, I'm trying to keep my life in balance. <laughs> sure. But it, 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 all I can say, Bernie, is this filled a creative need in me uh -huh. that I was unaware of um, until I started doing it. Went, oh, and I went, oh, that, that feels good. This is really great. I'm so and, and it's a way to give back to the city that I've come to love so much. It's beautiful to do something that, that you don't mind doing, something that you love to do, and, and, and still are, is rewarded for it. So this is a wonderful thing. We'll be taking another short break, Bob, because okay. uh, we'll have another few minutes left after we come back. But in the meantime, uh, we're at the New Life Evangelist Center, and we'll be right back with Bob Ball after this. Since 1988, New Life Evangelistic Center has been working under Pradesh State in the city of Kakanada along with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm asking you to please pray for the work of the New Life Evangelistic Center in India at this particular moment. COVID-19 has struck with all viciousness. New Life has a hospital there. We have 50-some workers in that hospital. Now we need four ventilators. Please pray for such. In addition to that, hospital beds are needed. Yes, patients are even there two to a bed because there isn't enough beds. Four to six people are dying a day. How we need to let Christ's light and love flow through us. Your gift to the New Life Evangelistic Center marked for India will help save lives at this particular time. You can send it to P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, 63166. Go to nlecstl.org. You'll find so much more there on the website where you can directly also give to India. But please pray for the New Life Evangelistic Center's work in India. Today's subject, Johnny Nash. He was born August 19, 1940, in Houston, Texas. In the 1950s, he made a string of albums for ABC Paramount featuring dreamy pop ballads that highlighted his sweet voice, including his first charting song, a cover of Doris Day's A Very Special Love, in 1958. He also started working as an actor and starred in the 1959 film Take a Giant Step. Along with his own pop career, Nash had a surprising hand in the development of reggae. He and Danny Sims formed J.E.D. Records, and while living in Jamaica, the pair signed Bob Marley and other members of the group, The Whalers. He also signed Peter Tosh and Bunny Whaler to an exclusive deal early in their careers. Johnny Nash scored his number one hit, I Can See Clearly Now, in 1972. He died October the 6th, 2020, of cancer. Johnny Nash. NLAC TV will continue to bring you wholesome family programming, plus many, many community shows that you only can see on NLEC TV. It's very important you bring it up on your iPhone, the NLEC TV app, or continue to watch it on 24.2. You'll be able to continue to see the Bernie Hayes Show, Zaki Baruti. In addition to that, you'll be able to see our Here's Help programs and news and views and so much more new and creative stuff that's going to be brought to you on NLEC TV. If you have questions on how to get that app on your iPhone or how to tune in 24.2, Call now, 314-436-2424. It's NLEC TV that's going to continue to bring you the best in wholesome community, family, entertainment, and renewable energy programming. So be sure you stay right there on NLEC TV. For further information, call 436-2424. Hello, welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes, and Bob Baugh is my guest. Uh, Bob, um, how has the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, affected your work, affected the music scene, and affected the world in general, in your opinion? Well, I think I think to put the world on pause in a way, yeah. um, we stopped publishing the Blues Letter for the last year or so um, as a result of this for a variety of reasons. Um, but the music business came to a grinding halt. Um, you know, the, the I'm, I'm pleased that most of the blues venues that were there before COVID, which were doing well, um, are still with us. Yeah. Uh, the one big one I can think of that uh, may have gone out of business is the Atomic Cowboy, which was a stage that had blues fairly regular. Sure. Um, 
But the others have hung in there, and they're, they're anxious to get back to work. I talked to Dave Beardsley yesterday. Uh, Dave is a local, um, another music guy, and one of the reasons there actually is a blues museum. Certainly, he's one of the inventors. He's one of the, yeah. Sure. And he's, I, I was just talking to him, and he says, yeah, we're getting all kinds more bookings. I mean, sure. people are really geared up to go back. But it's been a slow year for everybody, sort of a, a time to keep hanging on. Although, let me hold some of these up. This is a bunch of CDs from the last couple of years that have been put out in the city, blues things, yeah. a series by the Blues Society and others. Um, but people did keep working in, in those things. I mean, Jeremiah Johnson put out a new one. Uh, 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 Gene Jackson put out a new one. Um, uh, Roland put out a new one. Uh, many of them working with Blue Lotus Studios. But people Renee have Smith. been active and, and making music, which is yeah. a good thing. Renee is also very That's active. Right. Renee That's right. and... Uh, there's just so much we can do. You know, uh, me being associated with the National Blues Museum, it, my, my world has expanded also. And I'm sure just being around some of the exhibits that you've been involved in with the National Blues Museum, how has that expanded your horizon? Oh, just a whole lot. I became a docent at the museum. I, mean, mm -hmm. I, was, I was a regular for the first four years. Mm -hmm. I was the Wednesday guy with a guy named uh, Frank Murano. We were the Wednesday volunteers and would be down there for three or four hours and greeting right. visitors. and. And they would ask us to come and do special tours. Uh, Dave helped train us in that. So I just learned a lot more about the blues than I ever knew. I just knew at the beginning is I love blues music. And if I can give back and do something, I'll do that. How can we reach you once again, Bob Ball? Pardon me? How can we reach you? Oh, bob.ball at verizon.net. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, we were talking about COVID-19. Uh, do you ex expect some of the venues to open up anytime soon? I know the National Blues Museum, we're going to try to do something around July, August. That, that, oh, that yeah. Well, the, the Blues Museum is starting the Alfresco series, the, yeah. the, the things that, that would be done in the evening. I think it's Friday or Saturday night. I'm Fr not sure Friday. what the dates are going to be now. Friday nights, yeah. yeah so and they'll be the, having some pop-up shows also. The, the pop-up shows, I think, are pretty interesting because yeah. I think one of the challenges, I think one of the things that's happened is these pop-up shows, like the ones Jamo is doing, uh, behind Bush Stadium um, and some other places, they have now announced they're going to continue to do that. Yeah. So on the one hand, I know musicians are thrilled. Oh boy, uh, more opportunities uh, and stages. That'll be wonderful. Yeah. Um, uh, on the other hand, I think the clubs are saying, okay, this is great. I, you know, they, but they don't want to lose their business base either. So it's, it's going to be interesting uh, that there may be more opportunities opening up here as a result of COVID, of some new ways of delivering music that people had not done before. Yeah. And jazz and blues, uh, the arts perhaps would be returning and so, so many other wonderful things that we've been missing. Uh, oh, yeah. And, they, and they've tried really hard. I mean, if you go yeah. down to uh, the, the theater there, uh, right by KDHX, uh, the Grand L, yeah. they've done a terrific job. I yeah. mean, of constantly delivering blues and jazz in that outdoor uh, covered area that they put together to um, keep work, keep things going while COVID was shutting things down. Well, Bob, so much uh, we want to say thank you for. You've done so much for the genre. You've done so much for people. And uh, even when you were a union organizer, I know that you've made <laughs> some breakthroughs that people just don't have a clue about that uh, you're responsible for, good things that you're responsible for. I just want to say thank you. It's been such a pleasure just to know you, just to know you as a friend, to have you as a friend, and to know you as a photographer and a volunteer at the National Blues Museum and the Blues, National Blues, St. Louis Blues Society. You're just a treasure, Bob. I just, just want to say thank well, you for well, being here. Well, thank you, home. Bernie. I, I'd like to return that because I've learned from you. Well, you're very kind. Thank you, Bob, and good luck to you, and I hope that uh, you continue to do what you're doing. We are at the New Life Evangelistic Center. Bob Ball is my guest, and uh, He's a wonderful, wonderful person. We gave you his contact numbers and so forth. So we hope that you'll use Bob Bob too on some of your projects. In the meantime, keep, continue to support the New Life Evangelistic Center. We're 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. Reverend Larry Rice has been here nearly 50 years, not at this location, but in St. Louis area, providing services for those in need. I'm Bernie Hayes. I want to say thank you for supporting us. Thank you for continued your support and they continue to support NLEC TV Sound 24.2. Until next time, have a great day, and please stay safe.